Coming up at 3.30, it will be Game 7 of the Softball Championships here from Bakersfield College, Santiago Canyon College, and Sacramento City on SoCalCollegeSports.com.
It's the conclusion of the 2016 softball championships here from Bakersfield College. Mike Zepeda, Matt Folsom with you on the final game here between Santiago Canyon College and Sacramento City. It's been a fantastic weekend throughout. What do you do here if you're, if you're Sacramento City? The, the momentum not entirely in your favor and the, the Hawks coming on strong. You do, what it, you do what it took to get you to this level, and that was timely hits, two out rallies, and solid pitching, and that's mm -hmm. what you saw uh, when they went 2-0, and and that's what you need to see today. You didn't necessarily see that in game one against Santiago Canyon today. Santiago Canyon, uh, live bats, they came back from the deficit this time. I think the interesting stat from game one is 13 stranded runners for Santiago Canyon. It could have been much worse than uh, seven to four. However, the defense and the pitching for Sacramento City College had something to do with that. Yeah, I I, I believe you're exactly right there. Well, let let's G Gabby Ortiz is going to get the start for Sacramento City, the first starter that has not been Kelly Sargent or or uh, Justin Justin Bebout. Bebout. Uh, the the and so Gabby Ortiz doing her doing some work at the play too she has two home runs one in the game previous to this in game six a two run shot to tie it up early in that game then eventually they fall seven to four but she gets a start on the mound here for the panthers and she has been very dominant this season in the circle and i and i think what you're going to see uh, with ortiz you're going to see small ball at its finest from sacramento uh, from uh, san diego canyon you're going to see them put down a lot of bunts and try to get down first quickly that's in the take advantage of their speed advantage with ortiz on the mound yeah and if you want to talk about speed for the hawks look no further than jessica daniel she had three steals in one of yes in just one of yesterday's game and we've seen her leg out a couple of infield singles throughout the weekend uh, on the on the other on the other end of that mm -hmm. getting the start here for the hawks and santiago college not a shocker riley narwald oh, riley she's been narwald. fantastic throughout she's 19 and 7 now on the season after the win in Game 6, and we move on to Game 7. She's been a workhorse for the Hawks. Well, and, and her strength is pitching inside to right-handed batters. And there are three lefties on that Sacramento City uh, roster, and it's going to be up to them really to take advantage of their their side of the plate when, yeah. they're, when they're at bat. If, if uh, Narwald is on on that inside corner, she is tough to hit. It's hard to make adjustments to that inside pitch. And that's what Santiago Canyon is hoping for. Get a good pitching performance from Narwald. Get runners on base. Move them up just like they did in game one today. We are slated for a 3.30 start time here for game seven of the softball championships here from Bakersfield. Stay tuned, everybody.
Game seven of the championship series here from Bakersfield and softball coming up in just a bit. It's the Panthers and the Hawks, Sacramento City and Santiago Canyon College slated for 3.30 coming up in five minutes here on SoCalCollegeSports.com. Bootkoff about to get things started here from the dish for the Panthers. Riley Narwald again in the circle for the Hawks. It'll be Bootkoff, Gravel, and Ortiz to start things off. And uh, Narwald needs to establish superiority on that inside corner so she can work outside. We've seen her do that uh, multiple games now. And she's been pounding inside throughout. A lot of success really handcuffing right-handed batters. Right there, going foul yet again is Bukov. One and two. Today's umpires behind the plate, Dan Marksbury at first base, Lyle Dove, and at third base, Michael Herz. Game seven of the softball championships here in 2016 and the California Community College Athletic Association. Mike Cepeda, Matt Folsom with you on the final game of coverage here on the weekend. It's flown by, hasn't it? Uh, I, I wouldn't say that. Yeah, that, was, that was sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> Reaching out. This might fall fair. Just foul for Bukov. That would have been a nice start there for the Panthers as it stands. With the count will remain two and two. Nothing like a game seven. <laughs> we like game seven. We like game sevens. Everything on the line. No what ifs, what ne if necessary is coming up next. This is it. The end of the season will happen at the conclusion of this game here. That pitch outside from Narwald, three and two now. And Narwald, as we alluded to earlier in the pregame, has been the workhorse this weekend for the Hawks. That one chopped foul, and having said that, you want to make your work even more if you're the Panthers. Take your hacks, fight them off, and wait for a gift. Gabby Ortiz did just that. Yeah, we saw the effect of that. Earlier today with a home run off of Narwald. Tied with Emily Oleggi for the lead in home runs on the weekend with two apiece. 
wind picking up. It's moving left to right, as you can see on your screen. Wind played a bit of a factor last night. It's picked up later in the evening. Nice play made by Ashley Clark out in right field. Four out, number one in the top of the first. Interestingly enough, the, the coin toss was won by Sacramento City, yet they elected to go with the visitor's role. Uh, right, and I, I'm not sure the strategy. I, maybe they want to jump on top first. Well, I think right now it's, it's probably, if anything, to make Narwhal go back out there. As quickly as possible. That outside, 1-0. At what point does fatigue to become a does begin to become a factor? Cali Sargent was fantastic in the opening game this weekend versus Cypress, the number one seed from the South in a 2-0 complete game shutout. Two hitter and versus fatigue, the Chargers. And fatigue is uh I think characterized uh, with pitchers who, uh, in a tournament like this, not with arm strength or velocity, but more with leg strength, uh, being able to use your body the way you want to. Yep, absolutely. Not relying solely on the arm. I think both of those pitchers, Callie Sargent and Riley Narwhal, do a great job of really using all of their body to get into the pitches that they throw. This is Gravel, Katie Gravel. Chopper over to third. Langsbury up with it in time. And the throw a little bit offline, but Brittany Howe lays down the tag on Gravel. Two gone here in the top of the first. Heady play by Brittany Howe over at first. She was without that tag. She was going to be safe. That would have been a throwing error on the usually reliable Caitlin Langsbury. Making a great play on a hard hit ball to third. Ortiz, as we mentioned, with a home run earlier today in game six in the 7-4 loss to these same Hawks. That also off of Riley Narwald. Ortiz goes opposite way. That's going to trail foul. Ortiz, the starting pitcher in this game rather than the starting first baseman, as she has been all weekend. the lefty. I want to say that's going to be the first lefty that we've seen this weekend as well. I think you're right. Yeah. 1-1. One, one. Another foul ball. Hmm. And down the left field line. Now it's happening even with left-handed batters, Mike. <laughs> Narwhal in a groove. He's got 1-2 trying to go three straight. It's 1 and 2 now on Ortiz. Gabby Ortiz just a freshman. Fouls that one off. She's not a freshman any longer. She's no. played a whole year. Is she, is she a frosh? She's a a froth. She, well, well, she's uh, she's graduated to veteran status. That's for sure. She is a made made man. She's an incoming sophomore. Mm. One two outside two and two now. Good eye there from Ortiz. Remember, everybody, you don't have to be in front of a computer to watch the game live. Download the Ustream app for your tablet, PC, or smartphone device and search SoCal College Sports. That one swung on, lifted into center field. Is it going to drop for a hit? It will, and Gabby Ortiz on with a two-out single here in the top of first. It'll bring on Luffin. And then that ball just died. It just faded. Maybe the wind had something to do with that and driving it to the ground. But it seemed like the wind died. The wind died. It, it did. Yeah, it's dead now. Did, did the hit kill the wind? It did. So Gabby Ortiz, a wind killer, going head to head with Mother Nature there. Another hit on the weekend here for Gabby. And here comes Caitlin Luffel, catcher for the Panthers. We've seen a lot of two out rallies this weekend. Will we see another one right here? That one's going to be a single in to right field. Quick play oh. made over to first as Clark fires it over to Howe. Not in time, though. It was pretty bang-bang. Well, and that's something you never see in a baseball game. You see that in softball from time to time. You really got to hustle down to unless you're first playing, base. Unless you're playing Yasiel Puig. There you go. 
Puig has been known to pick players off trotting to first and uh, would be single. Welch won for four earlier today. And remember, you have to be careful with Welch. She leads the team on the season with six home runs. So she has some power in this lineup here for the Panthers. And she can make it a 3 nothing game. The single swing of the bat right here. 0-1. And, and that one handcuffs Welch. That's a good job by Narwold here with two on and two out, getting ahead of the batter quickly. Inside and high. Ball one. The final four for baseball set for next week. We will have coverage for you on that as well. Outside. Ball two. Count now even. Santa Rosa, San Joaquin Delta, Cypress, and Golden West have punched their ticket to Fresno. Two Big Eight squads against two uh, Orange Empire teams. Oh, we see in the Big Eight. That one over to short. Easy play for Carranza, and that will do it for the Defensive Player of the Year in the South. Five up to the plate, but no runs across here for the Panthers, and the bottom half of the first coming up here for the Hawks. We'll be back on SoCalCollegeSports.com. Broadcast being brought to you by eTeamSponsor.com, Diamond, Justin's, Bob McCloskey Insurance, and Nevco. In the field here for the Panthers from Sacramento City, Gabby Avila at third, at short, Katie Lopez at second, Madison Bukoff, Megan Anthony at first. In left field, Morgan Welch, center field, Cheyenne Newman, and in right field, Katie Gravel behind the dish, Caitlin Luffel, and in the circle, Gabby Ortiz. This is a lineup we haven't seen all weekend from Sacramento City College to start a game with Megan Anthony in place of Ortiz at first, and Ortiz in the circle for either Sergeant or Bebout. It'll be Hicks, Daniel, and Oleggi. First pitch in there for strike, 0 and 1. That one popped up to short. This is going to be a tough play, and unable to make it is Katie Lopez. Probably going to be scored a single. That was a tough ball to deal with. We will get the official word here That's from it. Andy Wheeler. And Wheeler in, indeed does rule it a hit. So it's a leadoff single here for the top of the order, Jordan Hicks. Here comes Jessica Daniel. First pitch on Daniel. A bunt laid down beautifully. Unable to handle that, Megan Anthony. This is her first go round at first base. And maybe some jitters there on the biggest stage of the season for Anthony, resulting in an error. First and second now, nobody out. Bottom of the first inning, and the Hawks building some momentum. 
And here comes someone you can make a case for for player of the tournament, Emily Olegi. Two home runs on the weekend. Will she make it three right here? Hard hit ball into the gap. This will score a run. RBI double at least. Will it be two RBIs? They will send the runner, Daniel, to the plate. The throw beats her, but Luffel cannot contain it. Two to nothing. The Hawks on top of the Panthers, and still nobody out. It's a hard hit single for Olegi, who stays at first. And the Hawks strike first blood here in game seven on the weekend. Cheyenne Newman with a stellar throw from center field. Definitely had Daniel at the plate and just bobbled by Luffel. And Newman just rifles that one home, but Luffel unable to corral that in and make the tag. So Daniel, you have to figure the speed may be a bit of a factor playing in the mind of, of Luffel on that play. That one in there for a strike. First pitch on by Gertza. Drawn first blood has not made much of a difference in no, any no, of these it, games except Sacramento City's first game mm. on Friday, way back when. Only shut out on the weekend. 2 nothing. Bunt laid down, be fouled by Mike Goetze. 0-2 oh now. Although I'd rather draw first blood than have first dra blood drawn on me. That's for sure. And Olegi adds to the accolades here on the weekend with a two RBI single. Oleggy, South Player of the Year, All-American. Definitely could have made a case. One of the Player of the Year candidates in the South. I believe that I, I believe that went to Taylor Pierce. Oh, you're South right. Pierce. Yeah, that's right. You're right. But you could have made a case for all, Emily Oleggy. All SoCal All-American. Indeed. Because that was Caitlin Pierce. And I, you know, I want to recognize, recognize Caitlin Pierce. You know, it's always tough to be – uh, such a major part of a team like she was for Cyprus and uh, have an injury take you out of an important time, which is the end of your regular season, regional, super regional, and final four action. So a shout out to Taylor Pierce. Yeah. And we wish her well. No doubt a prospect at the next level. She's yeah. only a freshman. You know, knee, knee surgeries has come a long way. Uh, I'm I know I know them well. Me too. I've had 10. <laughs> know it better than I do. A swinging bunt for Vigerza, and no play will be made. Avila can't come up with it in time. That was going to be a tough one. Should be an infield single here for Vigerza. I like that swinging bunt. That's pretty cool. You like that? Yeah. Coach Tim Kiernan calls time. And I'm not sure what he's questioning. Probably that it hit. Uh, that it should be a foul ball, hit the plate. Yeah, I don't think he's going to get that call. Not often do you see something overturned here. No, nope. and a lot of times coaches just want the opportunity to uh, calm down a team without having to go out and make a, a, a trip to the uh, to the circle, mm. which is what he did there. Infield got together with Gabby Ortiz, talked it over a little bit. And Kiernan does not is not charged with a trip out there. So Ortiz in a jam, nobody out here. That one fouled back by Langsbury. Langsbury leading the tournament in average. He's batting 615 on the weekend. And 13 at bats, eight hits, seven RBIs. We talked about players that you can make a case for for MOP, most outstanding player. Langsbury at the top of that list right now. Could be could we see a, maybe a co-MOP? Langsbury and Olegi, who have been huge this weekend for the Hawks. Hard that to pick. Back. If they were to go on to win, it would be hard to pick either of those two. Similarly with Sacramento City, where you have Sargent and you have Ortiz. Could you pick between three? Well, I with, think with with Riley Narwold. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. 
Well, that one fouled back. The nice thing about the awards at this tournament is you have pitcher, most valuable pitcher, you have most valuable offensive player, most valuable overall. Right. We will have the accolades as they are distributed after this game. We will crown a champion here in 2016 in the 3C2A. This is the epitome of an elimination game because it ends the season for everyone. Doesn't end with the broadcast, one, though. With one team, one team flag remaining flying. That one hard hit, driven to center field, back and gone! Caitlin Lakesbury with a three-run shot in the bottom of the first. Five to nothing, the Hawks jump on top of the Panthers. And maybe it's not going to be such a tough call. <laughs> With the home run, Langsbury hits for the cycle here on the weekend in Bakersfield. That ball absolutely crushed, no doubt about it, from Langsbury. Coach Kiernan out to uh, talk to the infield, but really just uh, he's time. just buying time to get a few more warm-up pitches for Cali Sargent, and there is going to be a pitching change main as Ortiz runs off. Probably see her because they don't want to take her bat out of the lineup. You're going to see her move over to first, yeah, and you're going to see Anthony, probably gonna come Anthony off. off, yes. And here, there goes Anthony. She's, oh. So, indeed, that will be the case. We'll take a break in the action here. Pitching change. Here comes Callie Sargent for the Panthers. So we have some changes in the infield as well. Avila off at third. Anthony moves over to third. Is that correct? No, that's Bebout. Oh, okay. So I'm sorry. Yeah. Justin Bebout at third. Ortiz back to first base. And Callie Sargent in the circle. She will try to weather the storm here. Soika. Now the batter for the Hawks. They lead it five to nothing here. We're in the bottom of the first. Oh, one fouled back. A lot of writing to do here. So, <laughs> Justin Bebout at third. I'm just going to reiterate this. At first is Gabby Ortiz. Megan Anthony comes out. And yeah, in the and circle. Anthony and, Anthony and uh, Avila. Avila. Oh. 
And back in the circle in her customary spot is Kelly Sargent. Well, you can't count the Panthers out yet. Never. Remember, versus the number one seed in the north, College of San Mateo, who some considered the favorite coming in. They were down 5-3 to three in the top of the seventh, and they plate three. Take a 6-5 lead. They end up winning that game 7-6 in extras. Uh, a few. In the winner's bracket. A few extras. Yeah, they're in 10. That one swung on, hit hard over to third. Bebout, nice play made on it over to Ortiz in time. How about Johnson Bebout coming in cold to play third and takes that hot shot. That's the first Hawk who has been at the plate who has not scored a run. Well, it's the first out of the first for the Panthers. And there were a number of changes. So one of the assistant coaches slash scorekeepers for the Hawks is uh, talking to the home plate umpire, just making sure that everybody's on the same page. The last thing you want is a scorekeeping error affecting the game. Be very unfortunate indeed. So Clark now in the bat. No one on. Five across, though, this inning, punctuated by the three-run home run from Caitlin Langsbury. Likely cementing her status as the MOP. She probably heard us talking about it up here and said, you know what? Let me just go ahead and put the cherry on top. She does just that with a three-run bomb. 1-0 on Clark. In there for a strike. And she put the chair on top of the three-day Sunday bomb. <laughs> I like it. Sargent, very effective this weekend, particularly in game one at, or game two of these championships versus Cypress, as we've mentioned. One and two now. And when she has the ability and the control to locate her off-speed stuff in the strike zone, she is very effective. That's what she wants you to do right there is fish. Take a swing into something out of the strike zone. You're not going to get much on it if you make contact at all. Ah, she, she did it again. struck her out. Oh, wow. They appeal over to third. From up here, it looked like she went. They say she did not, so, this, so that will even up the count two and two. His word is law. His word is law. Our word means nothing. That pitch high. The count now full on Clark. Clark started taking a step towards the Hawk dugout. She thought she was rung up, and then they appealed, and they said no. Incredible. 3-2. Swung on. Popped. Into center field. Newman with a beat on it. Put it away for out number two here in the bottom of the first. Brittany Howe had a good game last game. Howe, mm. now you're batter. Matt, well, did, did it look like she went around to you? I thought she did, but I don't know. I thought she may have on both of those. Mm. But now is the opportunity for the third base umpire to be consistent on those all game long. That went in for a ball. Whether he gets another one of those calls, I would have to think that he will with Sargent in the circle. Yeah. As you say, when she gets going, the, she has the batters fishing. They often come up empty. Swing and a miss. We talk about it right there, right on cue. Sargent delivers a nice off-speed pitch in the dirt. Totally fooled how. Caranza on deck. Swing and a miss. That one also in the dirt. And how completely fooled here by Sargent. You have to wonder. You have to wonder with the decision not to have Sargent in the circle to start. Well, it, it, if you go by the numbers on the season from Ortiz, from what we've seen, she's been very effective in 2016, but 
you know, the, the, I have to imagine that their their thinking was, let's go ahead and spell Sergeant, give her some time to recoup as much time as possible. Well, you didn't really get a lot of time there as the Hawks jumped all over the Panthers to start things off. We're only in the first, two gone. And five to nothing. Santiago Canyon College on top of Sacramento City. When Sergeant's on, she's almost unhittable. That pitch high. Have to have good discipline. You have to let that high stuff go. Full count now on Brittany Howell, who, as we said, very good game in game six earlier today. 3-2, swing and a miss. Strike three. And that will do it for the Hawks and the first inning. But they score five. A two-run single two RBI single from Emily Olegi, and then a three-run shot from Caitlin Langsbury. We head to the second inning in Sacramento City. Try to respond here in the top half of the second. You are watching SoCalCollegeSports.com's coverage of the softball championships here from Bakersfield. We head to the top of the second inning, and we we keep on talking about the accomplishments of this weekend by Caitlin Langsbury. Now 10 RBIs on the weekend. As much as uh, that's as much for some players in a season. Sergeant, now the batter here for the Panthers. As the Sergeant Major directs the drum corps up there. <laughs> Sergeant Major, is that three up and three down? No, not, when, not when Sergeant's hit the plate. That's a round tripper. <laughs> when she's in, well, three up and three down, that often happens when she's in the circle. That was more of a good morning. I got you. Yeah, uh, okay, I got you. You guys are far more advanced with your musical or your movie trivia than I am. Yeah, we're, we're just quirky like that. Quirky. One and one on Sergeant. Narwhal delivers outside. Two and one. Two and two now on Sergeant. Mike Cepeda, Matt Folsom with you on today's coverage. Along with Jeff Stoinoff, play by play on game six. That one hard hit over to third. And Lakesbury, call her name again, makes a fantastic grab on that one. Quick reflexes from Caitlin. That was sharply hit. Yes, it was, Sergeant. But it was sharply hit to the person you don't want to sharply hit it to. Yeah. If you're a Sacramento City College Panther. Able to track pretty much everything down. Katie Lopez nearly went deep on day two. That one nearly hit her. So Lopez, I believe, with three bombs on the year. Does have some pop in that bat. Came in with three along with Gabby Ortiz. Ortiz with two on the weekend, upped her total to five. Homering last game. 
Right, Steady you... breeze from left to right, Mike. Oh, and then it just dies as soon as I say it. <laughs> and then it picks up yet again, so it's an inconsistent breeze. Swirlies. Mm. That pitch outside, two and one now. On Ortiz. Or Lopez, rather. Fouled off down the right field line. Count even now, two and two. You know, five run lead this weekend hasn't uh, always been <laughs> no comfortable. Uh, you have to figure though the w the way that w Narwald has settled down nicely here in the circle has been choppy at times, but she's well, been excellent. I think the interesting thing is she has not lived inside in this game. She has really mixed it up in an in all over the plate, inside, outside. Yeah, well, I mean, just when you think you've made the adjustment, now she adjusts to you, and it's the constant chess game from the pitcher. Against San Mateo, she was in. She lived inside. Yeah. She was inside almost every pitch. A scouting deal, to be sure. Coach Camargo. Diligently at work, I'm sure. With her staff. That one fouled off again, two and two. The right handed hitters have struggled this weekend versus Narwold. That one right down the line should be fair, and it is. Lopez is going to be caught in a pickle. Lopez, no, she's there. Oh, wow. Got her, right. got her on the rear end. Got her right. On the back side there, four out number one. Uh, it was a single and trying to go for two, or out number two rather. It was a single. Lopez trying to stretch it to a double. And Jordan Hicks said, uh-uh. Hicks with a fantastic throw from left field. So beat out now the batter here. So seven six four three, I think. I could be corrected on that if you're scoring at home. That one into the gap. It'll be cut off nicely by Ashley Clark and beat out aboard with a single, two out single here. Back to back singles by the Panthers. Here comes Cheyenne Newman. And if you're the Panthers, it's one hit at a time to get back in. One pitch, one hit, one run. Mm. So Newman on, hitting 273 on the weekend in 13 at-bats. 0 for 3 against San Diego Canyon in game one today. Slap lefty, a not handled cleanly by the third baseman, Lanksbury, one of the few errors she's made this weekend. And aboard at first is Newman with the wheels on full display there. Pulled her head on that one while she was making the fielding attempt. Almost threw her out though, but the speedy Newman too fast. Possible two out rally here. Brewing for the Panthers. Trail it by five, five to nothing. Second inning and that one into left field for a base hit. Not handled cleanly by Hicks, but they're not gonna test her arm again. And how large does that Play for Lopez trying to stretch a single into a double loom. Now it's bases loaded, two outs. Yeah, that would have scored a run. Here comes Katie Gravel. Panthers never say die. No, they do not. Gravel will get to work here versus Riley Narwald. First pitch slapped over to Langsbury in time over to first. No doubt about that one. 
So the Panthers leave them juiced, but get nothing out of it. We head to the bottom half of the second inning, five to nothing. The Hawks on top of the Panthers. You are watching the softball championships here in 2016 in the 3 c 2 a here from Bakersfield. Bottom of the second inning. Trista Carranza going to lead things off here for Santiago Canyon College. It's five to nothing. The Hawks on top of the Panthers here on SoCalCollegeSports.com. Mike Cepeda, Matt Folsom with you on the final game of the day. Of here the weekend. Of the weekend. Of the year. Of the year. Well. Panthers trail it by five. They've left five on base. And to shed some light, uh, some perspective on that, San Diego Canyon last game stranded 13. So that isn't necessarily a... That one snatched out of the air there by Bebout. Nice play made. Carranza trying to lay the bunt down, but unable to contain that with the bat and the high heat. From Sargent. Jordan Hicks, top of the order, now up. Hicks one for five last game with a run scored. Daniel on deck. That one over to second base. Bukov cannot get there in time. One out single for Hicks. And you just have to make contact against Sergeant. Nothing more, nothing less. And now the speedy Jordan Hicks is on. Well, everybody's speedy. Yeah. And Jessica Daniel, who might even be speedier, steps into the bat. Yeah, she's she's part of a relay team somewhere, that's for sure. And there goes the steal attempt. The, the throw a little bit off the line there. Sacramento City faithful. The Panthers saying that she Hicks may be left early. But as it stands, it's Hicks at second, one out. And Daniel, 1-0 and oh ahead in the count. So 1-0 oh or 0-1? She swung. It's 0 1. 0 1. Says so 1 0 on the scoreboard. We'll get that right. Sheesh. <laughs> wow. Don't ever make that mistake again. <laughs> the 0 1. Outside. And Hicks is going to be awarded third base. What? Marty called that as soon as she saw it. Uh, 
You had to say that. I was giving Marty all kinds of credit. What's the call there, Folsom? Illegal pitch. Dead ball as soon as she released it. Delayed dead ball. Second time this weekend, I want to say that's been called on Sargent. Yes. What? Laid down. Sargent can't field it. It's going to be a run scored. And it's a two base air from Sargent. And Daniel alertly goes to second there. Sergeant can't get down on that one in time to field it. And they're, and they're giving uh, Daniel a, a double on that. Oh, wow. So they're going to say that the bunt gets through. Yep. And nobody home. Daniel goes to second. It's a bunt double. You don't see that very often. Oh, Leggy's going to be intentionally walked with good reason. I don't intentionally walk her, too. <laughs> and at what point do you think about walking Caitlin Lanksbury when she's at the dish? <laughs> it's six to nothing. One more across here. As Hicks came in to score. And Olegi at first, Daniel at second, one out in the bottom of the second. The Hawks continue to pour it on here in the final game of 2016 in the 3C2A. Wheeler, you okay over there? Andy Wheeler, our statistician on the weekend. Well, so he's faced with the task of coming up with the all-tournament team. No so pressure there. We will have that for you. Off-speed pitch in there for a call strike on Vigertza. You know, Vigertza has had an outstanding tournament behind the plate and at the bat. Could be the catcher of the, of the uh, tournament. Very well could be. Harley Donovan. Had a hot start for CSM, but she cooled off considerably down the stretch for the Bulldogs. That pitch high, one and one. Singled in inning number one and scored a run. First five batters for Santiago Canyon scored. Thanks to a three-run bomb, cherry <laughs> bomb. For the, for the player that's up next, Caitlin Lanksbury. Nothing like a potential grand slam in the in the offing. Yeah, just just adding to the cherry that she put on top of the MOP award, possibly. Earlier in the game. Gotta finish it. Well, she can do just that. She's on next. That one's over the outside half off speed again. Two and two now. Two flags flying in center field. One of those is going to remain at the end of this game. Bakersfield tradition. Inside pitch fouled. It's the top of the dugout for Sac City. Two and two. My Gertza pops it up. Racing over. Making the grab. Making the grab. So Gravel thought that the player left early at second. So Gravel making a great play in foul territory at the fence for the out. And then the relay bobbled, allowing Jessica Daniel to score. Did she leave earlier or is Jessica Daniel just that fast? I would 
I would give she's her. A blur. I would give her speed the ben benefit of the doubt. She's such a blur that you can't tell. So Daniel in Hicks in this inning. It's seven to nothing. The Hawks on top of the Panthers here in the final game of the year. And Langsbury, who had a three-run shot in the bottom of the first, now up here in the bottom of the second with another player on. So Leggy at second. That pitch inside. 2-0. and oh. yeah, First base open. The hottest bat of the tournament at the plate. Sergeant probably not going to give her much to see here. Could be wrong about that. That pitch made contact with, but struck foul. And did you credit that error to uh, second baseman? Yes. Cut off? Yes. So Budkov gets credit for the error, or is charged with the error. Mm. I don't know if you want to get credit for it. Charged with it. I will say charged with it. Probably the proper vernacular. Not something you see all the time, a cutoff person on the cutoff throw getting an error. Yeah. But it allowed a run to score. 2-1, fouled back, so 2-2 two and two now on Langsbury. And Vigertza, who flew out, fouled out to Katie Gravel, gets a sacrifice. Credited, credited to her box score. Langsbury, 9 for 14. On the weekend. 2-2 two, two inside. I bet Jeff's not here to figure out the math on that one. No, we have a calculator somewhere nearby. Of course, if she goes 10 for 15, I know it's 750. I think Jeff is probably listening in, so he could probably text in. Text in and let us know. Probably already is. He already texted. Off speed. Oh. Cold strike three on Langsbury. That's a huge K for Callie Sargent, who is battling for the Panthers. But two runs more. Here for the Hawks, and they lead it 7 to nothing. We head to the third here on SoCalCollegeSports.com. Tees will lead it off here for the Panthers. They trail it by seven. We're in the top of the third inning, game seven of the 2016 softball championships here from Bakersfield College. Mike Cepeda, Matt Folsom with you. On today's coverage, Matt Henson, technical director and graphics producer, Jorge Cepeda. On camera. One bat at bat at a time. <laughs> one hit at a time. You just have to chip away. You have to garner some type of momentum here if you're the Panthers. It's so good this weekend. And big spots, and Ortiz will start it off. The leadoff single here in the top of the third. And that took a monstrous hop at the lip. It really did. Here comes Kaylin Luffel. Talking with her dad, Adam, uh, between games, and he said that she didn't get a lot of playing time in high school. It wasn't until she got to Sacramento City College where she started getting some playing time, and she's looking to move on to the next level. Bops this one up to left. Hakes with it. 
for out number one. So it's level the, one for two today. It's one of the cool things about being down here for a, a tournament is you get to meet a lot of different people, especially the fans, the parents. Um, and, and those parents, you know, they've been driving their girls around since they were kindergartners playing t-ball. Yeah. And they would not be on this field without the, the support of the parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles. First pitch swinging by Welch. Morgan Welch now the batter here for Sacramento City. Fouls it off 0-1. Welch batting 231 on the weekend. Remember, leads this team in power. Six home runs in 2016. Ortiz at first, leadoff single. Get things started here in the top of the third. One one swing and a miss, the high heat. Well, Sacramento City's been pretty disciplined at the plate this weekend. But Narwald gets her swing in on that one. Goes outside. Two and two now. That one fouled back. Watch out for that camera. Stays alive, yeah. Camera shot right there. We'll go to it. Coaches loved that, loved that camera shot. I was talking to some of them yesterday at the uh, sophomore showcase, and I said, we need more of that. This one lifted to left field. Hicks with a beat on it and puts it away for out number two. Hicks busy this inning. Recording outs here for the Hawks. Two gun, top of the third. Here comes Cali Sargent. Sargent, good power this year. She has four deep, deep ones. And they're just looking for base hits. Anything to make, to move those runners up, and get runners on. Indeed. And if they uh, happen to go yard, it's bonus. And of course, that's the key in baseball and softball. Just make contact. Good things happen when you make contact. Hit so, line drives and so ground true. balls. Put the onus on the defense. That one fouled back, 0-2. Oh right Narwhal quickly ahead in this at bat. And I, Kelly Sargent. I would go inside heat on this pitch. Maybe even raise the eye level a little bit. Of course, it's 0-2. Britt McGorian saying don't give her anything good to hit. Assistant coach for Sierra. And he got his wish. They go with a possible pickoff play by Gertza. Over to Howe. Howe. Nothing Howe. doing there. Always scares me when you see a, a two-out throw down to first. Because a lot of times bad things happen. Yeah, you go throw in the right field. Runner advances. Inside. Cold strike three. And that will do it for the Panthers in the third. They strand one. Six left on base here for Sacramento City. We head to the bottom half of the third inning. 7 to nothing. The Hawks on top of the Panthers. You are watching SoCalCollegeSports.com.
Alyssa Soika will start things off here for the Hawks. It'll be Soika, Clark, and Howe do up this inning for Santiago Canyon College. Soika grounded to third to open or in the first. First batter Sergeant faced. That pitch in the dirt. Bottom of the third, seven to nothing. Day three has belonged to SCC, and we mean the one from the south, Santiago Canyon College, a two seed coming out of the south. And you know, we haven't talked about that. These are both two seeds. You know, it's not very common at this championship tournament to see both two seeds in the championship. It's Not cool. sure when the last time that happened it's was. Cool. It's a great point. That one rifled into left field, down the left field line, four base hit, Soika board. Probably uh, Sierra and 2014 Mount Sac, both number two seeds. Mm. All comes back to me now. What year was that? That's 2014. Wolverines coming back four times to capture the state championship, first time in their history. Ashley Clark now the batter. A pitch out on the first pitch to Clark. Testing out what Soik is going to do. Nobody covering at first. Ortiz, maybe some miscommunication there. The 1-0. Another pitch out. And now you get Bukov coming over from second to cover first. She was not there last time. So even if Luffa wanted to throw down there, she had nobody to throw to. Mm. That time she did. Sergeant, it's bunted down. Beautiful bunt, high throw from third, and Bebout does get the runner. Clark out at first. Soika to second. S successful sacrifice. And that was almost a disastrous throw. You've got really tall third base, our first baseman. Uh, Gabby Ortiz over there, and all of a sudden, a, a little bit shorter Madison Butkoff over there, and Bebout uh, throwing a normal throw, but just a little bit high with Butkoff covering. Here comes Howe. Howe fouls the first pitch back on one. It's not easy to say how fouls. How fouls, how fouls, how fouls. It's good lip work. Something to practice with in the car on the way here. For sure. Two gone here. Bottom of the third inning. Runner at second. That one through center field. They're going to send the runner. No play at the plate. It's eight to nothing. Santiago Canyon College. That one just hit right back up the box. Just solid hitting. And a pitch right over the heart of the plate for Brittany Howe. She's got an RBI single. And the Hawks add a run in the bottom of the third. Bunt laid down, Ortiz misses the tag, throws over to first in time to get Krista Carranza. And there was only one out. I thought it was only one out. Scoreboard did say two. It's correct now. It is now. <laughs> Scoreboard police here in force. So two successful sacrifices here. How over to second. Here comes Hicks. It's 8 nothing, and now you have to bring into play the mercy rule. We 
which is an eight run lead after five. In this case, it would be four and a half or five, depending on what Sacramento City does. That pitch called the ball. Yeah, that, that, that pitch, that last pitch looked pretty good. Not a called strike. That one fouled back by Hicks. The Panther faithful, very vocal. And for good reason. I, the, the plate has been a little inconsistent here. Some, some calls not going either way for the Hawks or the Panthers. The 1-1, one -1, swing and a miss. Oh, we, we talk about how Narwold likes to have players fishing. Sargent does just that right there. One and two. And now Sargent a strike away from getting out of this jam. High heat. High heat. Two and two. Sounds like a thriller, a movie. <laughs> it really does. Sequel to Heat. Coming out in June, it's high heat. <laughs> Theaters everywhere. Would low heat be the prequel? Or the sequel, depending on what happens in the original. It depends on the context. That one over to short. That was going to be a tough play. Katie Lopez unable to make it. I'm giving her a single. Actually, the sequel would be preheat. Preheat. Preheat, I like that. That would be the prequel. The prequel would be the would be preheat, right? Yeah, low heat would be a spinoff. I think we've worked that as much as we can now. That's ruled as a hit. So first and third down, two gone. And Daniel now the batter. How at third? What do we have here? We got a pinch hitter, pinch runner, pitch hitter. Not sure. And are we going to have a new pitcher? What's the call here, Matt? No. No new, no new pitcher, but I, we are going to have a pinch hitter. Is that Christine Woodling? It Indeed. is. So Woodling will bat for Jessica Daniel. Which is an interesting move. Daniel's been pretty successful. Scorcher taking, runs. Taking the with two runners on, two down, taking off a scorcher who has the ability to beat out an infield hit. Yeah. But that's why we're up here talking about it, and they're down there doing it. Well, the Hawks have been pretty successful today. No, no sense in questioning their success. They have owned day three here in the championships here from Bakersfield College. Christine Woodling, the freshman. Well, face Sargent. Who has pinch hit in every Santiago Canyon game this weekend. Oh, Leggy on deck. Chomping at the bit for an at-bat here. That one inside. 1-0. Oh. Well, if Sargent... Has trouble locating here. It's going to be a very precarious position versus Olegi. The 1 0. Woodling showing bunt. Steal attempt on. Got her. And they got her. Luffle delivers and Hicks thrown out at second. They add one more, do the Hawks. It's 8 to nothing. We're through three. We head to the fourth inning here on SoCalCollegeSports.com.
eight to nothing, top of the fourth inning. Mike Spade Matt Folsom with you on today's coverage for the final game here in 2016 in the 3C2A for softball. Next week, it'll be the baseball finals from Fresno. We will have coverage for that, of that for you. Mike Cepeda, Jeff Stoinoff. We're looking forward to working with Phil White, son of Jerry White. Hard hit to center field, and Jessica Daniel makes a play on it. And we talk about the speed on the base pads. She makes a quick adjustment to that ball in center field and puts it away for out number one. Hard hit ball. And it's defensive plays like that that pave the way to a, st a state championship this late in Indeed. the tournament. Katie Lopez, a hard hit out for the Panthers, and that will bring up Justin Bebout. Bebout, first pitch, swung on over to third in time, Larks Langsbury. So is that two pitches and two outs? It is. It is indeed. That's efficiency, Holmes. Can't get any more efficient, can you? Is it possible? Is no. it possible? No. I don't think so. Let's think about it. No. I, I, don't, I don't think you can. Unless there's, like, batter interference or something and the pitch doesn't count and it's two outs with only one pitch. But you still pitched. I guess so. I think there's no way of getting out of it. Text your answer. <laughs> if you have a suggestion, feel free to let us know. And that one lined over to Carranza. Carranza, the defensive player of the year in the South, shows just why with the quick reflexes. We head to the bottom half of the fourth. It's one, two, three for Riley Narwald. The Hawks about to be crowned here in 2016. We'll be back. in both of the first two innings. Base stealing Phenom. She gets on, she usually is going to go. Stole three yesterday in game number one. Sergeant gets the sign. Looks to Luffel, the pitch, the 1-0 pitch. This one hit to the shortstop. Lopez up with it, over. Not in time. And there we talk about Daniel Speed, and she's on with an infield single to lead off the fourth. And that brings up Emily Olegi. Olegi with a single, a two-run single in the first, walked in the second. Pitch catches the outside corner, strike one.
Wind blowing much more stern. Left to right, third base to first base. Swing and a miss. Count moves to 0-2. Sergeant way ahead. Got to watch for that off-speed stuff right now. Going to try, I would assume, to get a leggy to bite on something. She does and pops it to third. Bebat over to grab it for the first out of the fourth. That brings the catcher, Manoa Weigertze. 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 One for one. Sacrifice in the second. Singled and scored a run in the first. That one in for a strike. Oh, one pitch from Sergeant. That's high. Ball one. Jessica Daniel, infield single, stands at first. She led off the inning. One down, goes to second, easily in time. Danny with another stolen base. She is the thief of the tournament. Two on the count now to uh, Manoa Vigertza. That's just fun to say. It is. Vigertza. Vigertza. I'm going to miss saying that. <laughs> Hi. Three one pitch coming from Cali Sergeant to Manoa Vigertza. This one hit to second, up with it, Bootkoff to Ortiz. Vegertza is retired. Two down now. In the bottom of the fourth, Caitlin Langsbury, who blasted a three-run home run in the first, steps up. Caught looking by Sargent to end the second. First pitch to Langsbury. That one hit high. Morgan Welch underneath it for the out. And that ends. And for Santiago Canyon in the bottom of the fourth, no runs on one hit, one runner left. We're heading to the all-important fifth inning with the Hawks still on top, 8-0. Top of the fifth inning, eight to nothing. The Hawks on top, in, and the mercy rule is in play. If the Panthers do not score this inning, 
So three scoreless outs away are the Hawks here from the title in 2016. Mike Spada, Matt Folsom with you on today's coverage of the final game of 2016 in the 3C 2A. It's been a fantastic weekend of festivities here from Bakersfield College. Special thanks to everybody involved. Jason Boggs at the 3C 2A, George Matagakis, Carlisle Carter, Sandy Taylor, the athletic director and tournament director here at Bakersfield College. And Lisa Camarco coming over to re-enter someone. One, two, three batters do up for Sacramento City as they try to keep their season alive. Yeah, Bootkoff, Gravel, and Ortiz. Bootkoff one for two this afternoon. First pitch from Narwald in there for strike 0 and one. And you know, let, let's let's pay attention and give some credit towards the groundskeepers here at Bakersfield Co College, Albert Castillo and Angel Salmeron. That one fouled back. And this is one of the nicest facilities in the state of California, and those two a big part, a big reason why. That was not a beer, by the way. <laughs> Sound like one. Sure did. I, I would not have complained if it was, that's for <laughs> I, sure. I tell you, I started salivating. <laughs> <laughs> one and two now here on Bootkoff. How many Ks today here for Narwald, Matt? Just the one? I got one K. Okay. That wasn't a beer either. That one just misses on the outside half. Cameraman for today, Jorge Cepeda on the roof. Technical director, Matt Henson, also the graphics producer. Everything that you see as far as the displays and logos, Matt Henson put in work. That one laced foul. Narwald has given up five hits and stranded six, walked none. No free passes in this game, right when you need something like that to happen. Well, the fielding for every team that's played this weekend has been a little suspect. Not today. There is, the, I think, the one error on Langsbury. Yeah, one error on Langsbury in inning number two. But that's it. Fielding has been superb. The 2-2 two -two chopped over to short. Carranza with it up in time. No, it's she's safe is Bukov. So Bukov with a leadoff infield single. That was a tough play for Carranza, ranging to her left. Bang, bang at first, and Bukov, the leadoff player for the Panzer, legs it out. Leadoff single by Bukov brings up the right fielder, Katie Gravel. So here comes Katie Gravel. Gravel a grounded out twice to Caitlin Langsbury in her two at bats. She will face back-to-back -back lefties here. It's Gravel and Ortiz. And Narwald has been a little suspect versus lefties this weekend. That one hit foul. Slap lefty action there from Gravel. Rich Moore makes the weakest move I have ever seen to try to stop the ball in foul territory. <laughs> and I was corrected. He corrected me. It doesn't live on a houseboat on the Sacramento River. It lives on a trawler on the Sacramento <laughs> River. Ocean one, worthy. One. Over to short. Carranza makes the play. One gone. So two scoreless outs away are the Hawks from a championship and a state title in the 3 c 2 a here in 2016. Ortiz now up. Two home runs on the weekend for Ortiz, batting 400 coming into today. High off-speed pitch there, taking four ball, 1-0. Pitch 
pitch outside. They're not giving her anything to hit. No. That's smart. Yeah. Arguably the hottest hitter. For the Panthers at the dish right now, ahead and count 2 0. That one outside, fouled off. It's going to be tough to hit one out in this wind right now, which is really picked up. Yeah. But that's not what they're looking to do. They just want to make contact, get base runners, chip away. Two and one, that one outside again. So Ortiz. Not sure if she'll have the green light here. No. Just need base runners. You're down eight nothing. Three and one. Bukov at first. That one outside. Double play ball. They'll get the force. Will they turn to? That'll do it. A double play, the first of the weekend to end 2016 Santiago Canyon College. Your champion in the California Community College Athletic Association. We'll be back shortly and go over some of the accolades on the weekends for the all-tournament team and the most outstanding player. Early word, early money is on Caitlin Langsbury, but we will confirm that when we come back here on SoCalCollegeSports.com.
just a moment. We will announce the all-tournament team and the major individual awards given here at the 2016 softball championships from Bakersfield College. If you'd like to purchase a, a copy of today's game or any game throughout the weekend, let us know at SoCalCollegeSports at Hotmail.com for details.
So the all-tournament team has been announced here at the 2016 Softball Championships. The pitchers, Riley Narwhal from Santiago Canyon College, Callie Sargent from Sacramento City, Justin Bebout from Sacramento City. For the infielders, it's Samantha Dean from San Mateo, Toby Salzman from Cyprus, Katie Lopez from Sacramento City, and Alyssa Soika from Santiago Canyon. And Alyssa, zero airs on the weekend. Wild cards, Emily Olagu, Olegi, rather, from Santiago Canyon College, Justice Walker from Cyprus for the catchers. It's the two that you saw here today on day three, Manoa Vigurza and Caitlin Luffel. Outfielders, Ashley Clark from Santiago Canyon, Jessica Daniel, Cheyenne Newman from Sacramento City, Caitlin Chain from San Mateo, first baseman, Gabby Ortiz, utility, Brittany Howe, and the major individual awards, the Golden Glove, Alyssa Soika. We talked about the zero errors on the weekend. The best hitter, Caitlin Linksbury from Santiago Canyon College. The most valuable pitcher, Riley Narwald, and MOP, the MVP of the tournament here in Bakersfield. Caitlin Linksbury just crushing it, punctuated by the three-run home run in game seven en route to the 8 nothing victory over Sacramento City. That'll do it for our coverage here on SoCalCollegeSports.com. Join us next week from Fresno for the baseball championships. For Matt Folsom, Jeff Stoinoff, Matt Henson, Jorge Zepeda, and the whole crew here at SoCalCollegeSports.com. I am Mike Zepeda signing off. Thank you for joining us.